Ladies and gentlemen, how many times have I stated, I mean, it's practically every segment, how many times have you heard me say that the Democratic Party outsourced a third-party tech firm? The United States government never looked at servers, Democratic National Committee servers, never looked at them, never touched them. Even the pundits and the publications on the left state actually with pride, like they're very open and upfront. Well, you know, the government didn't have to look at them because, you know, um, Comey and, and all of them got pristine images. How do we know this? The Democratic Party and you-know-who, Madam Cyberhack, outsourced a third-party tech firm. There's a great article written by a journalist who is firmly on the left, great journalist, but this is on Fox News. So he's going to, I can tell you from being on the left at one point, he's going to get heat. New report claims to have uncovered conflicts of interest inside Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. The real clear, and this is Fox News, July, it, just yesterday, but... 190,000 views. The Real Clear Politics report claims Mueller's team relied on a, on a, quote, private contractor for the Democratic National Committee. This is, this was firmly within my last two Federalist articles last month and the month before, especially the one that was shared by, it was discussed by Rush Limbaugh for two days straight on his show. But CrowdStrike was outsourced by the Democratic Party. I state this every single day. I, it's like almost religiously I state this. Now, this is a fantastic, fantastic article that actually fostered a Fox News segment. It's by Aaron Maté, Real Clear Investigations Report. And it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. The interesting thing is... Almost everything, almost everything in this in this article I've been talking about for two years. Now, Aaron Monte is a great journalist. He's firmly on the left. He doesn't like Trump. I, assume, I from what I've seen, he doesn't like Trump at all. But it's very interesting when journalists on the left. Uh, actually repeat the things that I've been saying. But he did a great, great, great job. I mean, he is an excellent journalist. And I'm going to read this. CrowdStrike uh, out Mueller's own report undercuts its core Russia meddling claims. This is a great article. Great journalism by Aaron Maté. He is a fantastic journalist. And everything here is everything I've been saying. Um, if the U.S. government does not have a solid case to make against Russia, then the origins of, of, of Russia Gate and its subsequent predominance of U.S. Pol uh, political and media focus are potentially even more suspect. Given the allegations' importance and Mueller's own uncertainty and inconsistencies, the special counsel and his aides deserve scrutiny for making a central allegation they have, that they have yet to substantiate. I've often called the Mueller report the Mueller dossier. Other, I mean, I got that from, I think it was like Matt Gates or No, no, no. Who said that? Congressman Devin Nunes. It's a Mueller dossier. Now, this, this article goes on to talk about Brennan uh, talks about CrowdStrike out, being outsourced. But let's, let's, look at, let's look at the segments pertaining to Clinton. So, so <laughs> it actually it actually looks at um, Facebook these absurd Russian Facebook ads. One of Yosemite Sam, but okay. Let's it's a long article, but let's just read this. Uh, while the four hundred and forty eight page Mueller report found no. 
uh, people conspiring between Trump's campaign in Russia and offered voluminous details to support the sweeping conclusion that the Kremlin worked to secure Trump's victory. The report claims the interference operation occurred principally on two fronts. Russian military uh, intelli intelligence officers hacked and leaked embarrassing Democratic Party documents, and a government-linked troll farm orchestrated a sophisticated and far-reaching social media campaign that denigrated Hillary Clinton and promoted Trump. Then it goes on, and this article goes on to talk about how the only... They relied on forensics, a uh, CrowdStrike, a private contractor for the DNC. I spoke about this in 2017 in my book, Debunking the Trump-Russia Myth. It is on Amazon. And as you know, if you've watched this channel, I speak about this every single day. But it's fantastic that this is now, you know, you have a great journalist on the left. And everyone this person hangs with or knows or colleagues uh, with, most of the people in his circle can't stand me. But I've been repeating the same exact things in this article and which was on the, which was on Fox News discussed on Fox News every single day. So further, the government allowed CrowdStrike and the Democratic Party's legal counsel to submit redacted records, meaning CrowdStrike and not the government decided what could be revealed or not regarding evidence of hacking. Exactly. Brennan uh, played a seminal role in overlooked uh, in all facets. Seminal and overlooked role in all facets what became the Mueller investigation, the suspicion that triggered the initial collusion probe, the allegations of Russian interference, and the intelligence assessment that supported to, uh, to validate the interference allegations that Brennan himself helped generate. Yet Brennan has since revealed himself to be, like CrowdStrike and Steele, hardly a neutral party. In fact, a partisan and deep animus toward Trump. This is a fantastic, fantastic article. Uh, no server inspection reliance on CrowdStrike. It goes on to defend, the article defends Julian Assange as well, and as, it, as he should be defended, I believe he's a hero. If, if Steven Spielberg is going to make a movie about Daniel Ellsberg, he should do one, you know, championing Assange. They're the same people, essentially. But let's just, let's continue. Um... So, for example, no interview, no interview, no indictment based on um, interference in the election. That's another issue. So, Comey was implicated in another, the FBI's failure to conduct its own investigation of DNC servers, which housed uh, the record of alleged intrusions and malware use to steal information. Then... Does this article talk about yes? Uh, it does. Uncertainty over who stole the emails. How many times have you heard me say this? The Mueller's the Mueller report's narrative of Russian hacking and leaking was initially laid out in a July 2018 indictment of 12 Russian intelligence officers, and is detailed further in the report. According to Mueller, <laughs> operatives uh, at Russia's main intelligence agency, the GRU, broke into Clinton's campaign chairman. Okay, the hackers infiltrated. Yeah, okay, great. So. It goes on to talk about a whole bunch of things, but it's backed up only by CrowdStrike. Okay, so a highly respected company. So the so so there you go. I mean, this is redacted CrowdStrike reports, social media campaign, which is absurd. Buff Bernard coloring books, Buff Bernie coloring books, Yosemite Sam. So the Facebook ads were like ludicrous. It's a great article. Now, we have Aaron Mate, who's a fantastic journalist. Very likely doesn't like my viewpoint on a lot of things, but he is a fantastic journalist. And he deserves a great deal of credit for this article. It fostered a Fox News segment. And 
it's I find that fantastic. Um, he's he'll, he's probably taking heat from the cult members on the left. You wrote an article fostering a Fox News segment. Oh, I knew that you are not what you claim to be. Who knows what, you know, but anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out that everything that I have been saying for two plus years regarding the Mueller probe will be echoed and discussed by everyone. When I was writing in the Hill, the Huffington Post and Salon, I was saying that Clinton was unelectable. Now that's the prevail. Well, that she was horrendous, and the golden moo moo, Madam Cyberhack, was horrendous. Then I said that at that point, Democrat, the, the only chance Democrats had to win was Bernie Sanders. Of course, Bernie turned out to be to to engage in those cowardly act possible, fomenting a myth, a hoax, a bogus propaganda narrative that is now exposed brilliantly in this article by Aaron Mate. But in my articles in the Federalist, they say roughly the same thing, although this is in great detail regarding Brennan's role and a whole bunch. I mean, so this is really, really good. But I talk about CrowdStrike in my last two Federalist articles. Everyone's going to be talking about CrowdStrike. Everyone's going to be talking about the fact that, well, Trump has tried to bring it up. (laughs) But, you know, the left is like, I mean, there are literally articles in the Daily Beast, Advice, Gizmodo, talking about CrowdStrike with articles like, you know, Trump's ridiculous, absurd, conspiratorial viewpoint theory. Don't doesn't he know that CrowdStrike gave pristine images? Doesn't he know this? They gave pristine images of the servers to the DNC. Oh sorry, to the government. It's like first there's a conflict of interest. They would never how many times have you heard me say it? They would never allow the GOP to find Trump strike. But this is fantastic. It is a great article. I give him a whole lot of credit, and he's a fantastic journalist. But I have been saying these things. And and by the way, he's a contributor to one um, publication, The Nation. The Nation used to be, back in the day, a great voice against the establishment is from the left's perspective, or I should say an unyielding voice. They have, they have people there who, just to give you a glimpse as to how liberals or progressives or the left has changed, they have people there who's, who not only say, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but who not only say that Bernie Sanders wasn't cheated, but that Russia interfered. And that... that They interfered on behalf of Clinton to hurt President Trump. They repeat, if the far, if basically the far left repeats, if you have Mother Jones and the nation and and other publications that are typically far left or, you know, progressive, left-leaning, if you have people repeating what Clapper, Brennan, Comey, Strzok, McCabe, what they tried to to basically inject or spread or um, disseminate within the media. And what does that tell you about the country? This gentleman here is an excellent journalist. He's firmly on the left, but he's an excellent journalist. Um, Hopefully he doesn't get the H.A. Goodman treatment, but he'll... He'll either he already knows or he'll, he'll learn um, that if you get too close to the truth with the left, 
They try with their little fangs to try to attack you and little claws. Didn't work for me. With me, it's like I don't really care. I actually, I've actually gone to numerous people who've tried to attack me, wrote hit pieces on me, done absurd videos on me, and said, hey, I've reached out to them, said, let's debate on my channel. They refuse to. <laughs> That's the left. The left is, we don't like what you say. We're going to try to either silence you or we're going to try to uh, demean you and, and disparage you so nobody listens to you. It's like, no, the people who listen to me actually... <laughs> Um, either realize that Trump, that all of this was fabricated, or they just are open to logic. You know, you get these people like, I was saying throughout 2016 that Hillary Clinton was going to get indicted. Obviously, I didn't know there was a cover-up. Then you get people saying, yeah, that guy, he said that Clinton was going to get indicted. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Clinton was going to get indicted. <laughs> she committed crimes. She committed crimes. Okay, there was a cover-up. James Comey said that she didn't intend to use private servers with top secret and special access program intelligence. And you're going to find that out soon with people who... Um, perhaps Aaron Mate or another jur other journalist on the left who will say, hey, you know what? Clinton had top secret and special access program intelligence on her servers. Hmm. Probably, not only criminal, but probably so devastating to, to national security that they had to set up and frame Trump. And the third part, when I, when I wrote my last article that Rush Limbaugh shared and that's below in the pinned comment, all roads lead to Clinton. She also purchased the Steele dossier. Alexander also is linked to the Clinton. Uh, Alexander Downer is also linked to the Clinton Foundation. So I know there's people who are like, oh, here we go. H. A. Goodman always talking about himself. Well, you're, I mean, you're watching the channel for a reason, but also I'm ahead of the curve on, usually I'm ahead of the curve. I'm not perfect, but I'm usually ahead of the curve on the biggest issues. So those same people on the left who don't like me, that, you know, when I was published in the Huffington Post, the Hill and Salon, they think that my writing's absurd, and then they still read 538, and they still read uh, the Washington Post, they still read the New York Times, they still watch CNN, they still watch MSM and NBC. And ever, almost, it was unanimous on the left that, in, in mainstream, that Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. I wrote that she couldn't endlessly. And literally in the Hill, I said, why Trump defeats Clinton? And literally in the Huffington Post, I stated, favorability ratings make Clinton unelectable and she'll lose swing states. See, but the, the, the thing is, you know, they then say, well, um, Bernie Sanders wasn't cheated. Well, then why? Then they say, well, the Russians hacked the DNC to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated. Which one is it? Or no, they say, the hacked emails were embarrassing. Well, what was embarrassing about them? What? Well, what was embarrassing about them? You said that Bernie Sanders wasn't cheated and Hillary Clinton won fair and square. Yes, and, and you know what? Trump worked with Russia to hack the DNC. Yeah, and what did those emails say? What? What do you mean, what? What did those emails say? Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign. What do you, th why did she resign? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She, it was just, you know, yeah. And they just repeat, it's like they're programmed. They're essentially, it was programmed. Like Democrats have software. They don't have brains. It's just, it's just, it's just like, you know, you program, like you would program an Android or like an AI robot. They don't have like logic. It's just you, software, plug in. The latest nonsensical, irrational, outrageous, absurd thing that, oh, I don't know, uh, AOC will say, you plug it in, and even the smartest people will be like, yeah, you know, it's, a, you know, people have, you know, people are in all in one location, so therefore that phrase is right. By the way, read my Jerusalem Post article below in the pinned comment regarding that nonsense. So offensive, but they can offend the world, the left. 
It doesn't matter. There, I have to worry about the algorithm. I can't even go off on everything I want to, but whatever. The whole thing was... Sh- it, we were going to look back at this 10 years from now. <laughs> and it ain't going to... The Democratic Party you see today is not going to be the Democratic Party. Ain't going to be no Twitter or Facebook, I don't think. I don't think Facebook and Twitter will be around uh, even six, seven years from now. Young people are not using Facebook or Twitter. And there's and people are realizing there's like nothing, like social media is just a vile, these, these places are like a place, like a vile insidious, you know, just place where negativity just accumulates. And you have American culture. There's, how do I say this? Well, I don't want to get into it. The, the religion of people on the left might not be religion, but it's certainly moralizing on Twitter. So they don't, there's not like a concept of, okay, a higher power or God, or anything like that, but there is retweets based on, oh, yeah, really? It's Trump. He represents this, this, and that. Retweet, retweet, retweet. Oh, my God, I feel so good. I feel so moral. Oh, yeah, I feel like I'm... It's like, it's like there's spiritual sustenance. <laughs> it really is. The left's, <laughs> the left's... This is sad, but hilarious at the same time. The left's spiritual sustenance is Twitter. (laughs) It is. And Facebook. And whatever's on CNN. I mean, my God, it's so overt, so transparent. They're like contempt for America. Like the like the like hours before the July Fourth, um the parade, you know, like Trump President Trump's, you know, they're like CNN ran the state of hate. (laughs) Why would you run the state of hate? Like, this is, like, forget about it. I'm not even going to get into it. That's what you run? Really? July 4th, that's what you run? You want to just foment. They just want to foment, you know. As if Trump, like, everything was fantastic before Trump, right? In terms of those issues. Anyway... Great journalist, Aaron Mate, did a great job. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't have a Twitter account, and I'm not really, you know, in. I, I don't know what. The, I hope he's not getting pushback on this. The same like what Michael Tracy got. But you'll see more journalists who kind of break out of the Democratic Party mold, that progressive. Well, I don't even know if it's progressive. Very bizarre reliance on James Clapper and Brennan and Comey and Strzok. And these are the biggest scoundrels on the planet. Like, why would you, why would you believe them? Especially when they, they always fall back. Like, their excuses are, exa- are exactly, their excuses for not knowing are exactly what all of this is based on. The Mueller report makes the most absurd, like, all the quotes attributed to Trump, there's no evidence of that. In fact, how many quotes he said this about a country? He demanded loyalty from Comey. He said this is the end of my presidency. How do we know any of this? How do we know any of this? And now this is a fantastic article. Fox News picks it up, does a segment on it. I'm assuming it talks about... Uh, you know, does the Fox News bring up the journalist's name? You know, it's a real clear politics. Re- relied on private contract. And I, I saw the, the segment. It talks about CrowdStrike. Yeah. But we're going to look back at this moment in time. Oh, by the way, Hillary Clinton's running. And that'll be another another thing that I'm prescient to write about. You know, I haven't been right about everything. Fine. But I'll be right about that. 
And when it happens, ladies, tell everyone, tell everyone H.A. Goodman is saying that Clinton's going to run again. The notion that she wouldn't run again is absurd. And people, she's not running. And then I get, you know, get like the thing like, she hasn't run yet, and it's looking increasingly unlikely that she will. Like, why? <laughs> why would, what, because she just has to go to the second debate? Because, what, Democrats don't know her? She has, if believe it or not, a 77% favorability rating within the Democratic Party. Do you understand what I'm talking to you, right? I'm saying right now. She has almost an 80% favorability rating. Yeah. Yeah, drops mic. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Yes. No, the golden moo moo. Yes. Madam Cyberhack has an 80% favorability rating. You heard it right. Almost an 80%. Okay. When she when she runs. Oh my god. Oh my god. It is going to be like like God himself. Because they have no, like, no real concept on the left. So <laughs> their, their, their deities are like Bill and Hillary. That's right. I call myself a deity. And I'm just glad that people, they, they learn to appreciate my divine, um, my divineness, my divinity, divinity. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you think this was, if you think like this is like absurd, like we're living in the twilight zone, this is normality compared to the next year and a half. <laughs> when she runs, it's going to be fantastic. Oh my God. Clinton's going to run again in 2020. And when, well, first of all, let's put it this way Clinton will win the nomination, it will be Trump versus Clinton. Don't just think, oh, she'll run. Essentially, both Bill and Hillary essentially own the DNC. It's not like, you know, they realized after, after losing to President Obama in 08, she realized, she's like, oh my God, I have to essentially control the media and the DNC to get even a chance. Then she, then she lost to Trump. <laughs> that wasn't fun. Many, many walks in, in, the, in the wilderness in the woods with a giant bottle of Grey Goose or Kettle One or Russian Standard. Yeah, that wasn't a fun one. Then it's like, back to the drawing board. What do we do now? Oh, yeah, let's blame Russia. And then you program, you program this into the minds of liberals, of liberals who were like, let's fight Trump's, love Trump's hate. Russia did this. They don't see the irony. <laughs> they don't see the irony in any of it. They're like, you are blaming another country for your failures. Do you see that? Do you understand that xenophobia, like the definition of xenophobia, the definition of what Orwell, why he wrote 1984? You're blaming another country for your problems and trying to mask your failures, your inequities, by saying another country informed your voters of how corrupt you are. Huh? They don't get it. They don't care. You know, they just don't care. It's going to be very pleasurable and enjoyable. And, like, it'll be absolutely amazing when Trump wins again. The meltdown... And Lord knows, Lord knows what they're going to blame that on. <laughs> My God. But it's going to be, you think it's nice, it ain't going to be 1% Botox Biden and everyone else. How do we know? Because Willie, Willie Brown wrote in San Francisco Chronicle, I believe, but there's a million reasons aside from this, but he, yeah, no, 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 uh, no candidate can, can defeat Trump. He wrote this. Former San Francisco mayor, one of the most important people in the Democratic Party. And he knows Kamala Harris pretty well. Yep. He sure does. Uh, from just purely political reasons. Because the Democratic Party is a you know, wonderful political organization. That's why. Just purely politics. You know. Just being in California, 
senator and mayor of San Francisco, you know. Yeah, it's political leaders. Political leaders of California know each other. That's fine. That's all I'm getting at. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, great article, Fox News segment. They're talking about CrowdStrike like I've been talking about it for every day for two years. Give me your thoughts. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon link is below. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your kind words. Thank you for sharing my segments. Thank you for... Uh, this channel is growing. We're almost at 150,000 subs. And it's just me and Raquel Welch and Marilyn and my other background. Just... And you. And I just want to thank the Ramones. I just want to thank you for... And my federal, Federalist articles below in the pinned comment. I just want to thank you for your support, your kind words. And... I think that we're all going to enjoy the next year and a half politically. It's going to be um, it's going to be an interesting, wonderful ride. Lord knows what the Democrats will be up to, but let's get through all of this together. Thank you so very much. Give me your thoughts below. Check out my segments.